Morning, everybody. It's Dr. Perlman coming to you from the kitchen this morning in the house. I wanted to make this video because if you've been listening to any of my podcasts, you would know that the volume of practice is picking up and it's kind of just taking away from some of these short videos. And recently I was on uh, Athlete Factors, my good friend Kevin's podcast, and that's coming uh, your way soon. I'll have some snippets from it for you. And he asked me about like the whole the keto Cairo thing. And recently, or at least my family this week, they were like, how do you stay so skinny? How do you stay so skinny? And I'm telling them like, oh really, I'm not that skinny. No, I'm far from where I want to be with my body and all this because I haven't been exercising a ton. But here's the thing. I want to take you for a tour around my kitchen just so I can show you what the ketogenic style that I live looks like because it's very, you know, at times plant-based, at times it's animal-based. At times, it's a little bit more carbs. Certainly, people know that I've been toying around with uh, honey ever since I realized it was not the uh, uh, blood spiking or glucose spiking uh, devil that I might have thought it was when I was monitoring that a couple of months back with my glucose monitor. So I'm going to take you around the Dr. Perlman kitchen real quick and show you what it looks like to be ketogenic so you can have kind of your ideal physique, if you will, year-round when speaking strictly about weight loss. So come check this out. All right, so I'm going to flip the camera around here and show you this. So one of the first things that sticks out just here in the corner is, you know, bananas, apples, lemons. You know, I'll have about a half of a frozen banana in a particular smoothie maybe twice a week. And it's not like, hey, you know, the banana necessarily, you know, signals the insulin or signals more blood sugar. It might be like, what else is in the banana? What's the combination? So if I did a banana and like a, um, a nut butter, that might be something that actually is a little bit more harmful to my system unless it's post-exercise, but that's for another podcast. As you can see, we have our local uh, made honey. This right here is from Allen and McKinney and the surrounding areas, Collin County, um, Churchill Farms, you know, wildflower honey. This is like raw, organic, straight from the hive honey. This does not really bother my glucose um, almost at all. It's very tasty. A couple of tablespoons like that in the evening or even sometimes in the morning now, mid-afternoon. Antibacterial, antiviral. It has a really nice, you know, um, effect in terms of treating like the, uh, you know, canker uh, sores and things like that for me. Uh, I put it actually on like if I have a pimple, if I have wounds, if I have things that are bothering me, I'll put some honey on it. And honestly, I, I felt like that's been very effective and it's tasty. It's natural. Now, re recently I have been eating as many nuts and seeds, but I mean, guys, pumpkin seeds, again, another thing that's very anti-parasitic in nature and highly recommended for people, um, you know, Marcona almonds and macadamia nuts. I like this brand Nutso because it doesn't have any, you know, hidden oils in the ingredients. No hidden oils that we could see in the ingredients. I don't know how much I trust it, but it's it's kind to my stomach. And guys, here what I'm about to show you is pretty much like kind of the the, the king of the castle. The reason that we were able to monitor um, ketone levels, the reason that you know things year round kind of stay somewhat you know consistent for me when I'm eating well. And. Uh, we don't eat you. We don't eat, we don't eat you, Axel. Get out of here, you little teddy bear. Actually, you know what? Don't go far, you. So here we go. If there's ever going to be a treat, maybe once or twice a week now, I prefer Mammoth uh, as the go-to ice cream. There's actually so much stuff here in the freezer that I don't eat. There's some Ezekiel bread or 921 grain bread. Like I really you know, don't eat that. That's very harmful to me. Uh, lots of frozen green beans, vegetables, or fruits for smoothies. But if you can see down here, this is where the magic happens. There's always having, you know, fresh wild caught fish, whether it be salmon or bass, readily available to have like half a serving. Um, here I have individually wrapped. These are like ribeyes, very fatty ribeyes. Um, in this package over here, there's some, you know, oxtails uh, really wrapped in like, you know, heavy, you know, fat and cartilage and, and collagen, excuse me. Uh, there might be some shrimp in this bag, but the things that fell back there is like lamb. It's all like pre-packaged lamb. When we go into the refrigerator, we're just gobbling down sea salted, grass-fed butter. You know, all day, every day when we cook, we're seldom using lots and lots of goat cheese here. When I say seldom using and then saying lots and lots, it means that we use different varieties with small amounts. You can see some mushrooms. You can see some broth. This is bone broth or chicken broth. 
that's constantly made, ready to go out of the refrigerator. We just have to heat it up uh, in the evening or in the middle of the day if there's time. Um, these are the only snack treats that I really eat, again, when I'm eating what I desire. Uh, it's just dark chocolate and the keto cups, or uh, if you've watched my YouTube videos, I make them on my own. And then of course, eggs. I actually don't eat many whites these days. I eat pretty much only the yolks with these um, eggs. Just try to get the best quality I can. And here's the thing that I'm doing with the blueberries, raspberries, cherries, things like that. There's a little bit of watermelon back there and some kiwis. Guys, I eat this stuff on its own, like only on its own at this point. And then there's some uh, Atlantic salmon ready to go with a bunch of beets and vegetables and things of that nature. Again, you have Primal Kitchen and uh, other uh, varieties of avocado-based or, you know, avocado oil-based, uh, see, avocado oil based dressings. There's even a little maple syrup when I make my pumpkin pancakes. There's some pumpkin in here somewhere. Um, some almond milk. I, you know, I prefer using goat's milk when I can, but almond milk is fine for some smoothies. Not pictured. Not pictured. Coconut cream. Gotta have some coconut cream. We always want to have a variety of spices, guys. Spices are not going to you know, hurt you in terms of your dietary weight loss goals unless you actually have a sensitivity to one of these or an allergic reaction to something in here. But you always want to dress it up fun and nice and change the way the meat and the fish taste. Here we have duck fat. A lot of times I'll cook with some duck fat or various other kind of lard. And then there's the coconut butter. That is coconut manna, coconut butter, two in the same to be able to make our uh, pancakes to get some good binding and some different flavor. And up there's some red lentils that I'll have once in a great while and some buckwheat for some oatmeal that I'll have once in a great while. And then here, and, and really this one last thing about condiments, over here, I mean, instead of ketchup, doing a chipotle Tabasco sauce. Instead of sugar, using a little tiny bit of liquid stevia because liquid stevia, this right here is like, 5,000 times or 500 times, you know, whatever it is, sweeter in terms of the way it's actually made and measured in terms of the actual sweetness, right, measurement than regular table sugar. Yet it doesn't seem to harm or signal me in terms of a blood sugar fluctuation or spike versus, you know, uh, regular table sugar or flour or something like that. Last but not least, you got your chia seeds, put these in smoothies, make it with whatever kind of coconut cream base with a little liquid stevia. I mean, you could live on this stuff for a short amount of time if you had to, <laughs> if you had to. And then look at these wild caught sardines, throwing them into various salads. If you don't want to be so meat heavy, sometimes I prefer now to eat a lot more lamb and a lot more gra uh, I should have grass fed. That goes without saying. Beef, bison, steak, ribeyes, that's what I prefer. It's accessible. It's easier to prepare that doesn't take as much cooking. You don't have to make a whole salad like I would with my sardines. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful. I hope this was more of a like, you know, really just how to stay thin or how to stay lean or how I eat a keto diet with a lot of flexibility year in and year out now, ever since I got out of that early realm of being very strict keto. Yes, I do credit that for kind of getting me more of a lean physique and something that I can build off of and then eventually develop a little bit of metabolic flexibility, which once I stopped eating, honestly, honestly, once I just stopped eating refined processed foods and breads and various other grains that were really bothersome for my system or raw vegetables that were really bothering my GI, once I stopped that, I was able to really kind of get it under control. It does take a bit more discipline. Is it lacking? Eh, only in the sense that I don't eat a lot of birthday cake and cookies. <laughs> but guys, all that being said, I hope that was helpful. You know I'm about that coffee that it was not pictured today, but feel free to comment, subscribe to the channel, like our channel, share with your friends and family. Somebody out there wants to see this, they need insight, maybe they need some help or some direction. And uh, if we can do that for them, really glad that we can. Uh, until next time, everybody, it's Dr. Perlman.